Hi Dragonflies, welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. In the last video, I gave you three strategies for learning to design paintings of your own, even if you're a beginner. The first of these strategies was silhouette paintings, where we found the largest silhouette that was recognizable that we could, and then created a painting using that silhouette that is at sunset or sunrise or night or fog, conditions where you would see mostly a silhouette. I demonstrated the first two strategies in that video using a photo of a lighthouse. And as I was demonstrating, I was thinking to myself, someone is sitting there thinking, I wanna know how you would paint those stones in the building. And I was also thinking to myself, this is why it's a problem to paint from a photo if what you mean by that is basically copying the photo with a few editorial changes. When we look at the photo, we tend to jump immediately to worrying about how am I going to paint those stones or other things like that before we even ask ourselves, do I even need to paint those stones? Is that part of the story I want to tell about this lighthouse? But then of course, I'm demonstrating by painting from a photo. It's always a bit of a dilemma for me how to choose demonstration material. I do use photos for reference, but I rarely base a painting directly on a photo. But when I'm demonstrating, I need some way of showing you the picture that's in my head or giving you an example of the type of situation where the techniques might be useful. Since we're working on video, I can't just point, so I and most of my fellow instructors use a photograph as a quick way to illustrate the situation where you might use the technique we're demonstrating. This gives the impression, unfortunately, that the way to work is to copy a photo with a few editorial changes. Now, if that's how you typically work, I'm not here to scold you. I did too for a long time. It never occurred to me back then that the instructors I was watching might not be doing exactly what they would do if they were working from this photo in their own studios. They might have simplified things a little bit to focus on the particular technique they were demonstrating. I just tried to copy what I saw. And it made sense if you live somewhere where six months out of the year your paints freeze on the palette if you try to paint outdoors and you want to be a landscape painter, what are you going to do but work from photos? So I struggled to escape from the tyranny of the photo. I felt like I don't know enough to make stuff up, so I've got to kind of go with what I've got here in the photo. So I want to give you a couple of tools today that might help you break free of that and use your reference photos in a different way that might be a bit more creative and give you a little bit more leeway to design paintings that really express something that you're excited about sharing with your viewers. So let's return to that lighthouse for a moment. So this is Sand Island Light in the Apostle Islands. It's on the westernmost point of Sand Island in the Apostle Islands of Lake Superior. I was there on a kayaking trip, highly recommended if you're a kayaker, it's a great place to go paddle. And we paddled around the island and got a chance to look at the lighthouse from a lot of different angles. And then I went back after we camped on Sand Island and there's a rocky ledge down below that you can stand on and I made this sketch from the shore. And I actually didn't do a lot of painting on this particular trip because the next morning there were some clouds on the horizon that built up into thunderstorms that eventually uh, started pouring on us and this isn't completed because after that the whole rest of the seven day trip it was raining and pouring rain and watercolors don't go together very well. And I'm telling you this because it factors into the decisions that I'm going to make about what kind of painting I might want to make based on this lighthouse. So I, I did the sketch from shore, um, but the most interesting views to me of the lighthouse were from the water, looking at it from a distance. And the very most interesting thing about this lighthouse to me is it's a lighthouse. <laughs> and so I think about being out on the water and seeing the light at night or seeing the silhouette of the lighthouse and kind of knowing where you are. 
Unfortunately, the only photo I had of the lighthouse was the one you saw in the last video, taken from the same rocky ledge where I made the sketch, so I didn't have any photos of how the lighthouse looked from the water, much less at night or during sunrise or sunset. But the memories that I had that made that lighthouse interesting to me were of the late afternoon paddle that we took around the island where the lighthouse was all gold in the afternoon sun and also the lovely sunrise that we saw the next morning before six days of rain started. So those are the things that really excited me, but I didn't have any reference material. So what if we just throw caution to the winds and see how far we can get with just the material that we have. So I brought my photo into a digital drawing and painting app called Autodesk Sketchbook. And I'm not going to explain in this video how I use Autodesk Sketchbook. I made a separate tutorial teaching you just the few features that you need of this program in order to do the same kind of planning process that I'm doing here. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description. This is free software that's available for Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS, so pretty much everybody should be able to get their hands on it. But you can also do this same kind of planning with ordinary paper and pencil and your watercolors. So pay more attention to the planning process and not so much to how I'm using the actual app here. So here's my photo, and I'm thinking to myself, I want to do a scene where I'm seeing this from the water from a distance. And this is the kind of situation where our silhouette painting or silhouette drawing sort of idea from the last video might work out well. So the first thing I do is just trace the large shapes and make kind of the big silhouette. So I'm actually going to make this lighthouse pretty small because I want to consider views from the water, from a distance. And I've made it a little smaller here than I think I want because it's pretty easy for me to zoom in and crop. So the next thing I do is take my little silhouette of the lighthouse and kind of sketch in an island around it. Now, I've seen this island enough times that I felt like I could get the character of the island without having to get all the details exactly right. So I went ahead and did this from my imagination. And next I used a couple of the digital painting tools to add some color to the scene. Now everything I've done here is purely my imagination and my memory, but there's very little de detail here, so I felt as though I could kind of make this up and get away with it. I've kept a very simple color scheme. I've got kind of a blue-violet that is in the sky and the water. And that's probably simplified, but it fits very well with my memory. Probably you could see more colors in the water. Maybe the sky was not quite so violet, but that's kind of how it felt to me. And it seems to work as the basis for a painting. And it sets off very nicely the golds in the stone. And then I turned the forest and the shoreline more of an autumn gold because it simplifies the painting process for me and it also seems to fit the feel of what I wanted this painting to communicate better than if I had a lot of greens going on there. So I think about what makes a good painting and what can I get away with inventing and if there's something that I can't get away with inventing for example, perhaps I need some help with those reflections, then that's where I'm going to go look for more reference material. But in that case, I don't need reference material of sand island light at sunset with reflections in the water. All I need is <laughs> reflections in the water of any sort of similar scene with quiet water. And there'll be a lot of those for me to look at to understand how might those reflections look and actually, this would be not a bad plan for a painting that would be much more interesting to me than simply copying that photo and also have a lot more of the emotion of the day for me in it. And now I can play with, would I rather have it a little closer so you can see more of the lighthouse or do I like it far away like this? And then I can say, well, you know, okay, that's a good plan for 
a possible painting based on this lighthouse. And I can also say, well, what if I would rather do it as a nighttime scene? I can start from the very same sketch and add different colors. Let's make it nighttime and maybe give a little pink glow at the horizon and turn on the light in the lighthouse. And I can ask myself how I feel about that scene. I can try putting some stars in the sky. I can put some reflections in the water. And I can even add a few kayakers. Now, those kayakers, you might be thinking to yourself, I can't draw people. Well, I got to tell you, I can't draw people quickly either. They're just little blobs. And that's okay because this is not the painting. This is brainstorming for the painting. So there may be things in this painting that I'm not sure how I would handle. In fact, there are probably a bunch of things in this plan that I'm not sure how I would handle. How am I going to handle the reflections? Am I going to spatter a mask for the stars in the sky? Where am I going to find models for my kayakers? But the thing is, all of these problems are problems that I can solve individually. So if I really like the idea for the painting, if this really excites me, I can say, all right, so now I know what I need to research. And if there are techniques that I'm not sure of, I can try them out by cropping in and doing just a section of the scene, or maybe just a little postcard, where if the first thing I try doesn't work out, it's not a big deal because I don't have a lot of time invested. And for something like this, where I might need some photo references, these are tiny little kayakers. So I can go off and look for references that show kayakers knowing that I don't need every bit of detail. Mostly what I need is their silhouettes. So I have allowed myself to design the painting I would like to paint using the information that I do have about the lighthouse and then not worrying about the other things that I don't know how to do because those are all skills that I can acquire individually if I'm excited enough about painting this painting. And the only information I really needed from photographs was the silhouette of the lighthouse and the silhouettes of some kayakers. So actually we've gotten all of this mileage out of that silhouette painting method from the last video and perhaps a little bit of research on things like how to suggest stars and watercolor. So I've now designed two different paintings based on the inspiration from this photo and my memories of the day that I'm much more excited about painting than anything to do with that original photo. And notice, I never had to worry about how to paint the stones in that building. So instead of starting from whatever the photo has and making a few changes, I start from what excites me about that scene or that subject or that day, and I see how far I can get using just the information I can draw from that photo, and where I don't have enough information, I ask myself, is this something I could invent or research? And if I have a design like this, where there are many different things that I'm not sure how to handle, that's okay, because what I can do is, instead of concluding that this is beyond me, I can make sub-paintings <laughs> and learn how to do the skills that I need for the bigger painting, and the little paintings by themselves are still nice, interesting little paintings that I'd be happy to make. So it's not like I have to do these chores before I can paint this painting that I dream of painting. I just paint some small paintings that teach me the skills that I need, and then I tackle the big painting when I have all the skills. One tip about these sub-paintings. I'm calling them sub-paintings instead of studies for a reason. When we think about studies like a color study or a value study, usually what we're doing is shrinking the whole painting down to a smaller scale to figure out the color scheme or figure out the value scheme, and that works fine for that sort of thing. But if you're trying to figure out a watercolor technique to use to suggest something, it often works better to crop in and do a little section of the painting instead of shrinking the whole painting down to test techniques. And that's because in watercolor, very often we're using techniques that involve some kind of water 
action, wet and wet techniques, or the water moving the paint. And those things happen at their own scale. What I mean by that is if you drop color into wet paper, it moves however far it's going to move based on how wet the paper is, not on how big the sheet of paper is. If it moves a half an inch, that might be just a small piece of a full sheet paper, but it's quite a lot of a postcard. So when you're trying to figure out what watercolor technique you want to use for reflections or how you want to handle the light at night, it's often better to just do a little subsection of the overall painting and do your watercolor techniques at about the same size that they're going to be when you insert that little subsection into the larger painting. So I hope that this gives you a little window into how you might go about planning a painting based on photo references that isn't just more or less a copy of the photo with some editorial changes or a person brought in from another photo and is actually more reflective of what got you excited about making this painting in the first place. So I hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you next time. Happy painting!